quality guess. Um, Go ahead and zoom. Looks like it. Synapha Yeah, like this is a cutthroat eel. An actual. Wait, hold on. Way bigger than a halosaur. Yeah, right. Much wider, I guess. Mm -hmm. Also, a different head shape. Um, head shape is one of the things that we look for when looking at fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh. Well. Yeah, I think it got confused. A little, <laughs> little confused. <laughs> Super cool. Great. Yeah, those guys can get so big. Mm -hmm. Yep, so it would be cutthroat eels are synapse for brankety, and you spill that mm -hmm. like this. Yeah, it's going to take a second to load. I can I can write it in for you too. Synapho blanket. Mm -hmm. Super cool, folks following from all over the world. Hi, whether it's your day, your night, which is after lunch here um, in the Central Pacific, but stoked to have you with us. And if you have questions, um, send them in. If you're watching over on YouTube, you can come on over to nautiluslive.org where you can uh, check out the bio profiles of the team, um, get to know and see all the highlights of what we've been up to, including photo albums of blogs, um, and sending questions from the live feed. Uh, this is where we have our, our question chat. Also, Megan, um, mm -hmm. did you notice, it's is uh, the environmental stuff working to, for the public or not? Um, right. Science data is working, yeah. The yeah, the homepage displays of the depth, they're not. Um, that was after the control vans came down yesterday and back up. That part of the data system on the homepage isn't showing. Okay. But, um, working on it in progress cool. to get it back. The live data display, yeah. So we just finished a 30 meter ship move, so Atalanta should start <coughs> swinging down soon. Kay. Hmm. Not, I mean, from what we can see, there isn't much, we haven't really seen sponges. We've just seen the dead sponge stalks yeah. and it, there might have been some small, some mm -hmm. little things that looked like they could have been sponges, but that we didn't zoom on. Yep. It's on still cam. Is yep. there something right here? Or am I making that up entirely? No, there's something there. Yeah, right in the lower view, right where that fish is pointed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slowly, oh, there it goes. <laughs> Some solitary tentacle. Go ahead and Polyp, zoom. I mean. <laughs> yeah. One solid Maybe solitary tentacle. hydroid. It looks like it's got a whole bunch of tentacles. Um. It's hard to see from this angle, but it does kind of have that look. <laughs> No anemone. It's an anemone. I was about to say. It's way fleshier, <laughs> bigger. Look at that. So hard wow. to tell with scale. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like a little anemone tentacle. Yep. Mm -hmm. And to the right of it, it almost looks like there's a tube worm tube. Yeah, right I see there. That. Mm -hmm. And underneath, there's a little casing mm -hmm. there, too. Oh, yeah. All right. It's like one of these puzzles. The closer you look at it, the more things you see. I know, with yeah, all really. everything over it's here, incredible. every dive we've gone on where we're like, there's mm -hmm. nothing there. Or you zoom in on one thing and notice there's like 50 other there's things. There's so many things here. Yeah. Like the, the one time we zoomed in and there was like a bunch of potential oh, yeah, like, sabellids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sabellids and like super light 
bryozoan fans that you yeah. couldn't see any other way. Yeah, it starts to show our biases towards mm -hmm. big, showy, colorful things for sure. Lila, like do this. you have a favorite organism we've encountered so oh, far? Oh, forever <laughs> sea dandelions, yes, <laughs> without a doubt. I noticed that there was another sea dandelion. I was looking back at VidCap highlights and mm -hmm. I saw another sea dandelion. Oh. And uh, and I don't remember anyone freaking out about that one, so <laughs> they weren't being a missed opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> different watch, different priorities. And it looked like it might even have had its like strung out strings, kind of trapping it in a mm -hmm. uh, in between two rocks. That is in a new compilation. If you go check out the hi latest highlight oh, video nice. from Nautilus Live, it's there. Which I strongly encourage you to because they're the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> Libby, how about you? Favorite organism encountered on the mission yet? Um, I would just say seeing the sea cucumbers, mm. like seeing like the the, <laughs> the giant ones. ones. <laughs> yeah, the really giant ones. Mm -hmm. Those have the been purple my ones that fly. The overly yes. inflated ones. Those yeah. have been my favorite so far. In a panastes, Count Chocula style with a little <laughs> fan. I really like those. Yeah. And uh, so, and we also had an encounter. Um, I don't know, two watches ago? we look ago? at that, please? Where, like, mm -hmm. one just, there were these really, really, like, pancake-looking ones, and mm. it just kind of flopped up and gave us a show and also started defecating. Mm -hmm. and it was Ballast really funny. control. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and zoom. Are you talking about the one that, like, pooped its way off of the video? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, like, danced while pooping. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Dead, dead stock of what I uh, maybe sure. a sponge, sponge? It, it looks really decayed yeah I feel like these are breadcrumbs it's always when you yeah. start like finding them you're like I you're know. like they're, you're, they're nearby they're here <laughs> <laughs> we're not alone we will find okay, you maybe things. if you're directly on our path yeah. I know mm -hmm. like how many hundreds of years ago was this your home mm-hmm Question, thanks for the questions coming in online. Um, do we ever use hydrophones to record sounds and vibrations? Um, yes, we have in the past. It's not a tool we have this expedition. The, one of the kind of secret things about ROVs that's not really a secret, mm -hmm. but when you're watching the feed, you can't really tell the noise that we make. So um, if you want to use hydrophones recording on an ROV, you either need to filter your sound, which you can do with algorithms. You know what frequencies the different equipment um, put off so you can basically mask out those sound bands from your data or you could set a hydrophone on the seafloor powered or connected to cable in another way or battery powered and then uh, leave it and come back for it and we've we've done both of that from Nautilus yeah really neat um, artwork can come out of that too mm -hmm. and I know that there have been what? many artists on Nautilus mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had um, painters, we've had watercolorists, um, cartoonists. We have some awesome artists coming out later this year, too. Ooh. Excited. Um, Stephanie Weinger is going to be a science communication fellow for the Johnston mission. And she is a science illustrator. Wow. I'm really stoked to have her. Oh, that'll be cool. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, really all kinds of cool sound. I mean, if you think about like sound is absolutely the landscape of a lot of these ocean environments and it's just something this tool is not perfect at picking up or we're not regularly equipped to pick up um I, I liked hearing the the bubbles the sound of methane bubbles um coming out of the seafloor which we recorded yeah that's on Cascadia what i was going to ask about mm -hmm. is we we had this question in the past and that was the only time i could think of that a hydrophone was used and i didn't know though did was that hydrophone left if you remember left behind in areas and then like the sub went elsewhere or yeah, go ahead and zoom those were left behind um in between dives but okay. um groups like the ocean networks canada group right. have wired hydrophones and then you can actually like hear the rovs approaching and then leaving <laughs> during the maintenance dives which is kind of cool okay so we're looking at a tube anemone but this looks different from what i'm seeing in the guides um like its mouth area looks a bit different, but 
kind of similar. Yeah. Yeah, the, the oh, like the stock of its body doesn't look kind of armored in the way that some of the others right, end up yeah. with sticky smooth. mucus. Yeah, it has like a smooth mm -hmm. stock, almost kind of see-through edges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's and cool. You can, you can really see its mouth. <laughs> yeah, its mouth is that dark purple bit in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yep. All those tentacles have little tiny harpoon cells, nematocysts, and then they pull food into their mouth in the middle. Yes. Like right. licking off your fingers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really fun to watch. Um, if you like Google videos of like, um, corals do it too. But mm -hmm. if you Google videos of anemones, it's more visible. <laughs> or the poor anemones that live at touch tanks at aquariums where they like, they like rotate them yeah. so they have rest. Because <laughs> they like literally touch them and grab a hold and kind of like Velcro. Yeah, it is a fun feeling. Mm -hmm. It is. In. They're like, they're trying to slowly digest. Yeah, what? The um, the hydrophones, yeah, um, the Ocean Networks Canada stuff, anybody can log on to that mm -hmm. data portal at any time through their website. And you should be able to at least get a previous, if not live, hydrophone data. Absolutely. If they have any set up, which I think they generally do. Mm -hmm. And we also have some of like their favorite highlights, so you could go in there and you know just be like, what does it sound like when a humpback whale goes by a hydrophone or a sperm whale? Or um, they're also listening for earth sounds, like yeah. underwater landslides. Go ahead and zoom. It's probably a shadow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like a shadow. A on it. You can just uh, you can just forget I did that. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Okay, full you. wide. Cheyenne, question for you. Um, does the ROV move as a response to the ship moving, or is the ROV flying around keeping the cable slack? Can you explain yeah, that yeah, of course. dance? So um, Atalanta cannot move on her own. She is reliant on the ship. She can just kind of turn around and go up and down. So um, as I'm moving the ship, Atalanta is being pulled. However, since we're super deep, Atlanta has a low response time to the ship. Um, so when I'm mm -hmm. when we're talking about like the swing of Atlanta is where if we stop the ship, Atlanta will keep moving towards the ship. Um, but Hercules uh, swims wrong on on its own. Um, mm -hmm. However, the cords about. 40 meters, 30, 40 meters. So it can only go in that radius. Thank you. Looking at a steep cliff here. Still nothing on it from what we can see. There's a fish. Oh yeah. yeah. Do you want to see the fish? Just a quick zoom. Looks maybe cuskily. Go that ahead. That fish definitely blends in because I did not see it. <laughs> I know. Mm. Every time I'm like, oh, my oh. eyeballs. Oh. Hi there. Yeah. Let's look at those. Spots. I think it's one of those. Is it one of the cuskills with the weird head? <laughs> Big head. You know, and again, scaling lasers 10 centimeters apart or about four inches out the width of the palm of your hand, maybe, uh, or the length of the palm of your hand. So you can kind of imagine the scale of these animals there. That's a cool fish. Yep. Yeah, some kind of cuskill. That's a gigas, maybe. That's I think that's one we've seen in the deep, in in deeper depths before. Okay, yep. come on. It's good. Yeah, thanks. They're kind of looked like there was something to the left of it, like a very small. But I don't know if we have time to look. We have to come up a little bit in a minute. Yeah. To the left. Yeah, like right here. Do you see that okay. little like? 
Oh yeah. When we zoomed in, it kind of didn't look like a rock. Go ahead and zoom. But I could be wrong. What are you looking at? Oh, <laughs> very tiny. Hard, I know. Hard to zoom on. That's why I was like, might just be detritus. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think we're good. Yeah, we're All good. All right, pull wide. We finished our sh second ship move. Adelance is about 50 meters from the ship. Um, so it's up to y'all if you want to keep going mm. or you want to wait for her to swing back. Do we know what, what was the layback when we were kind of getting, starting to get pulled on last time? Um. If you don't know, that's okay. Yeah, it it depends on the time. So like, when we were grabbing the rock, it was fine. But when we were sitting for a while, I had to just like keep moving the ship up, mm -hmm. um, even if she wasn't super far from the ship. I don't know exact numbers though. That's okay. Um, I think we can keep moving. Okay. Ooh, can we zoom on that to the upper left? Oh. Uh, just out of the corner. Good eye. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of yellow. Oh, oh, let it be a jelly. Oh, it's hey. Not. Oh. Yeah. It's like a little golden urchin. Go ahead and zoom. Yeah, urchin. Oh, really cool. Oh, you're cool. Uh. Um, she needs it. Yeah, can we slurp pick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, so stop cool. The ship there. That's really different than the other ones that we've seen. It, it does. I've never energy. seen anything quite like it. And it's on the move. Mm -hmm. It is quick. Why does everything want to leave? <laughs> so yeah, urchins move by using. Um, is it two feet? Or is mm -hmm. Yeah, they've also got bombs? two feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have you can see them. They are echinoderms. So same as sea stars, same as sea cucumbers. Well, same big. Phylum, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. phylum. Big group. But um, this coloration is something that's rare. Usually they're kind of darker or they're more cool toned, I guess. Yeah, kind of purple. This Ooh, one's like bigger than the palm of your hand, you know? Yes. Well, than okay, full wide. Those. Always going down the cliff. <laughs> it's like making a run for it. It is. Get me out of here. It's super cool to see how uh, this navigates. Oh, this. we need to uh, put porch the up. slurp jars up there. No, no, not the porch. Okay. Just uh. <gasps> oh, full oh. sand. You're on full flush, sand. right? Oh. Uh, yep. Turn the pump on like 30%. Oh. Silly so look correction. I put this date right. Um, am I still gonna put this six? It's super yes. cool how it yes. just navigated down okay. there. Yeah, that was quite the landing. Sure. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, <laughs> it's moving it, it real like fast. It adjusted its spines as it went down as well. So incredible. Sun. Like little That's grappling really hooks. Happening, yeah. Love it. So the little tube feet are a uh, water vascular system. It's like a system of hydraulics. So they're pushing those, um, can, uh, Push water into different All right, tube turn feet the pump off. to extend them. Can't really Can. get in there. Uh, let's see. Off. Is that in there? Mm. Come down a little bit. The closest thing I see is this a kind of thyroid question mark. Mm. So that's great. We love collecting question mark things. We yeah, really exciting to try. see if get something new.
and Chris Ma, who is a, 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 an echinoderm taxonomist who we go to regularly for advice on what it is that we've found, um, reminded us that at the depths we're diving, many of the kind of derms we're, we're finding are valuable new collections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know the live stats uh, aren't working at the moment, but we're over 3,000 meters deep. We started this dive over 10,000 feet deep, so um, these are really you know, special opportunities to be able to get down this deep and be able to catalog the biodiversity of who's here. Yeah, Chris Ma's expertise is so key to us to being able to make, you know, any of these kind of IDs. Really appreciate all of our scientists ashore. It was funny um, when we asked about the last slime star mm -hmm. that we found. Uh, he's like. Indeed, I am already aware of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this live star. I was wondering if you would come to me, mm -hmm. which was great. <laughs> That's awesome. The real question is, how are we going to store it? What, the search room? Yeah. I am not worried about it. Okay, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, suction on 30. On 30. Steve uh, is also back with the us. Flat the side. Oh, great. On 50. 50. Uh. <coughs> oh. oh, oh, oh. 70. 70. Ooh. Nice. Got it. Okay. Where's it going? Go. Uh, porch again, because that's the only All place right. we can go with it. Uh, tray coming out. I'm trying oh, to think of which side of this is better. I kind of would rather it be with the sea slug than with the sea pen, I suppose. But also, it's huge. It's. I mean, it can fit in either of these just fine. So uh, that was Lambda. Oh, no. no. Come back, come back. Is try the pump still running? Try 80. Yeah. Or yep, 100. It's on. Yeah, okay. the 100. Oh. Ah, oh, yeah. Come on. Damn it. Reposition. Close that box, please. Kay. Closing. Cute. Mm -hmm. You think you've won. You have not. <laughs> <laughs> Exit the little guy that we got. It's making yeah. a run for it. I think it it's now. always so impressive how mobile all this stuff is, you know? And I, yeah. I, like it puts it in good perspective, oh. but like our RVs can do a lot, and Such like they're also this like big, sometimes kind of slow moving thing. You know, when you watch biology just jet in, jet All out. Right. I'll bring the suction back up. Hundred percent. Hundred. All right. We just don't have any hydraulic That's flow. That's okay. For if we can't get it, we cannot get it. This can be our last attempt. Uh, yeah, the flush is not. Come a bit wide. Flushing. Shut no, there's down. no like. There's no, there's no juice for everything yep. at once. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Flying um, arm section. Hold on, if I can just like let the sub idle, uh, like something like this. Mm -hmm. Hold on, hold on, okay, and then do this. Suction on. Let's see. All right, the flush is moving. All right, off. Off. That's okay, Mike. 
We have some great stills of it. Yeah. Good footage. Don, or you want one more? That's okay. All right. I don't want to wear you out and try this every two seconds. I feel like i got to count, count my, uh, <laughs> I only get so many. Well, it's it's easy to get if the flow, like, I would right. be willing to try it again. It's just if you don't want to spend any more time on it, we'll go. I think we're good. All right. Is the box fully closed? Let's see. Till tray in. Yep. Uh, yep. Going in. Fully in. Um, all right, Cheyenne, we can get Roger. the ship moving again. Okay. Um, okay, porch out. Just watch the delta in there. Mm -hmm. How close also, you are to the ledge Cheyenne, there. you might want yeah. to take off the sample mark. Oh, yep, yep. Yeah, I'm going to come up just a little bit. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, did you get this group? Or I'll throw it in. Loopy. I did. You did? You got mm -hmm. it? Great. Um, Sarah, now I know yes. you are still cam master, but um, <laughs> on that computer, the side chat should work on Chief Sai again. Uh, which one? Um, you know how your chat doesn't work on that computer, on your Chief Sai computer? Oh, yeah. Or I suppose now we could switch mm -hmm. however, whichever way, it doesn't matter. I was about to say, so... Um, That's Mon left. It doesn't. It doesn't matter because you're operating still cam, so it's fine. But yeah, you have it up over there. But I'm just saying on this computer, it would work now. Is what what Mike has told us. Okay, I made note of that as well. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. So Mike, let me know if I've got this summary right. But um, we're having some hydraulic total power, thinking about like the total amount of hydraulic power we can exert. So when we're using some for the thrusters and some for the slurp and some for the arm, we're coming up a little short. And that's partially related to the depth, right? What uh, are that's close. Okay. The, the, the flow issue is not related to the depth. That's something mm -hmm. else, uh, like why, why we're dumping. Mm -hmm. it seems like it's going over a relief valve probably. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But the the other the other bit that you're after there is like yeah the d the deeper we go, the more we have to crank the flow on on all our instruments and in the rebuild I think I don't, don't quote me on this I wasn't here but I think we've got some new valves in there and maybe their their max flow rate is a little lower so mm -hmm. we're like maxed out on some things like the the suction jars are at the maximum flow output and I. The I think the pan and tilt is as well, and you see how slow they're going. Mm -hmm. And this is deep, but it's not that deep. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so it's kind of an issue we need to address. The why we're dumping so much, why we can't maintain pressure with having like running the arm and the thrusters at a time is a separate thing. Um, but yeah, those are the those are the issues. Thank you. <coughs> Lila, folks want to know. Do <coughs> Uh, how close to an ID did we get on that golden urchin? Uh, yeah, I think just to family, potentially uh, some kind of a kinothurid. But even in, so with things like that that I'm not familiar with, we're looking yeah, at the ahead. Okeanos Deep Sea Guide, Deep Sea ID Guide, uh, or the Ocean, uh, the OER Guide. And um, yeah, the closest to looking thing to that urchin uh, is a kind of thyroid question mark. So with no lower ID. So yeah, it would have been an awesome and, and, and likely new collection, but it's great to have also even just gotten the, uh, the stills of it. And I imagine that that question mark ID that's in the guide is from something just like this is from having seen it and taken imagery, but it not having been collected. Yep. Yeah. So. so you can dead reckon it as well, right? You know it's right out in the front now. 
but I'm also trying to consider, you know, can't tell you the distance so well, but you can know it's here, right? How far we've made it and how many other things there are to be discovered. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, we're elsewhere on the so scene. So many different things yeah. already, and we're two hours on bottom-ish. Yeah, something like that. Ish. Whenever Cheyenne is um, done resetting DVL uh, or whatever she's working on up there, I'll, I'll see if we can find out how far we've gone so far. Yep, You're that's not what I picked up. <laughs> Cheyenne? <laughs> not that far. We've made a lot of zigzags. Overall, um, 172 meters. Woo! Right. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I think it's like we were calculating times initially off of like 200. Oh, wait, no, that's 250 meters an hour, not a watch. I'm trying to remember. Well, let me see here. Let's do some quick math. Yeah. Looks like we've got about five kilometers on the dive plan. Mm hmm On a 20 to 24 hour. Mm hmm I like that someone just put 22 on the board. Yeah. Just to be like, it's official. I've set a number. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, that is about 220 meters per An hour. hour. Yeah. Yep. So we're going slower than that, and that's OK. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll probably. We'll definitely be able to go faster once we get shallower. Though. Yeah. Yes. And collections will be faster, and, and ship moves will be less confusing, having <laughs> to back up and go forward. And mm -hmm. I really like some viewers on social media where we're wanting to know how detailed the dive plan is, and I feel like the answer is as detailed as it needs to be, but yeah. not more so. You yeah. know, you're like always trying to approach this line. Um, you know, sometimes this expedition right the dive plan has just been like, explore this ridge in the direction that the ship right. is happy, yeah, you know, with all the constraints. Somewhere. And this time, it's like we have a goal to cover five kilometers across the sea, total linear distance across the sea floor, but that's not counting the, we're climbing up a ridge, you know, so we're headed up and down and zigging and zagging back and forth. So track distance will end up with a whole lot more mm -hmm. and it doesn't, you know, there's no magical line to the line that we set. We just want to go where, where things are interesting. Exactly. And even on yeah, this good. one, you know, we somewhere. figured, okay, maybe this ridge-ish path or, or going over this hump on our way up this flank is, will be interesting. But if it turns out that there's something interesting to the left side of the hump and we never make it to the summit of that, that's great. We'll follow that. Um, it, you know, if we're seeing lots of high-density coral or something. And mm -hmm. similarly, when we get to the very top of the ridge, we kind of made an either we can go left on this ridge or we can go right on this ridge. It's kind of like a spine feature almost. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll, that decision will be made when and if we get up there. I always look at like the, the pattern in the sand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like tracks. I was to say, like big sea chunky cucumber. sea cucumber tracks. maybe. Mm -hmm. So yeah. many wide made that one. Just make a mess of things and then just Scoot Moving. your way off. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's, it's like the only clean path. It's just like cleaning a path <laughs> yep. through and then scooching off. Yeah. I only want to tidy up this much. <laughs> um, for everyone watching online, we are aware the live feed of the data streams is down. We're working on it. It's a system that uh, did not come online after our last um, time we needed to take several of the data servers down. For maintenance, so we are aware of the issue and are working on it. We'll get it back soon. Are we good to continue? The yes, ship moves? please. Yep. Yeah. Doesn't this look like a cool place to walk around? What was this a like cool place to walk? walk. Yeah, it's always so hard to tell. Like, if I were standing right here, what would it be like actually to walk around? Mm -hmm. And we did one time have a 360 degree camera down on the ROV, and afterward, um, I know at least some like you could in a still scene walk around uh, or Go not walk around zoom. but look around um, was set up with VR glasses, and I'm, I'm sure that's a thing that will see more and more in the future is the ability to actually pretend you're sort of in a spot on the seafloor and look around. That's really okay. cool. Okay. Yeah. What are you? And some like 
once upon a time sponge. <laughs> yeah. Spicule mass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would be my best guess. Cool. A little wilted. A little too That's good there. Yeah. Thanks. Good? Yep. I'm also not seeing so much in still cam. What? This floater. Yeah. Is there anything along that feature on the left? We'll see. Hanging off. Sarah, someone wants to know what the lasers are for. Can you explain them for us? Yeah, so the lasers, the two green lasers that Oh, are there's two Sarahs. Oh, I was uh, like, I was like oh, Sarah with an please, H and yeah, Sarah without wait. an H. Any Sarah, please explain. Sorry, okay. I just was like, wait, who's talking? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's great. Um, yeah, the two lasers that are in the center that are green, um, we use these for size measurements, for like size estimates, and they're about, uh, they're 10 centimeters apart another one of those C pens so whenever be. we take pictures or whenever we're you know getting close-ups we can take like a screenshot or you can even see it in the still cam um, and we can estimate size from the deep and um, also the still cam I keep mentioning is a really high definition camera that I am operating um, it's not being shared but you will see the pictures afterwards after they're hand selected for highest quality. Um, <laughs> and they're placed into a gallery online by our um, science communication fellows. And yeah, they mm -hmm. show all the cool things that we are taking pictures of in really high definition uh, quality. That's right. So right now we're trying really hard to use all of our eye cells to look for things. <laughs> <laughs> we're playing the game of is it a shadow? Is it sediment? Is, is it a it black rock? sea slug? <laughs> This is kind of expected at this depth, so. Mm -hmm. But the things that we have been finding are like very different, so that is really neat. Yeah, usually deeper down, sort of low density expected, but of interesting mm -hmm. critters. And why is that, Leela? <laughs> um, I suppose the amount of marine snow that makes it down to these depths maybe could play a role. Um, let's see what else. The Extreme quality of the snow, the yeah, quality, quality of the right, of what's already been consumed mm -hmm. on the way down. Um, I mean, we're not so crazy deep that there are like insane differences in pressure between the shallower depths we've been in here. Also, That's a factor. temperature isn't really temperature is fairly consistent. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. I can't see you right now on my screen, but I imagine somewhere between two and four. Let's see. Yeah, it's around around two right now. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that is also kind of the lower limit for corals. So it kind of makes sense mm -hmm. that we're not seeing a lot of corals around here. They like to be in the two to four region. Right. Two to four just degrees below Celsius. like 1.6, something like mm -hmm. that. Yes. Um, oxygen, I don't know is whether that's a huge factor where below well below the oxygen minimum zone although it is certainly lower here than higher up in the ocean 
I also want to say we just passed a swimming poly key, but we didn't get a zoom in on it, so I don't know. It just kind of looked undulating and not shrimpy. Mm -hmm. So there's stuff just somewhere. Yeah, there's lots of stuff. And then, like, so many in faunal animals that are oh going to live, like, down in the yes. sediment and things here. So, you know, I think it's important to know, like, we're biased for the types of life that we're seeing just by the tool that we're using. If you were a scientist or an explorer using different kinds of tools, you would be able to reveal different types of knowledge about the spot. Oh, yeah, what's that? Something. Like a yeah, really a translucent sea cucumber uh, or... Well, it's very sedimenty. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of microbes that we're also not seeing. Oh, yeah. That are very important to this um, ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and zoom. Who are you? Um... <laughs> A decorator like sea a, cucumber. Yeah, very <laughs> sedimented sea cucumber. Oh, cool. Now more sedimented. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we heard you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's like it has a bunch of like rocks along its corners. I mean edges. That's interesting. Um. Well, I guess we're good to zoom out. Yeah. Full wide, please. <laughs> So is the ship moving now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't know of any instances where sea cucumbers take up sediment. Lila, do you want to try and just keep the ship going? Yeah, let's keep it going we'll right now. It, like we're it's waiting gonna a lot. Because it's going to take a long right? time to okay. catch up. Yeah. Each time. I know it was rough when we were stopping a lot, but overall, yeah. it takes a, a long time we to have yeah, less stop, go, stop, to stop, stop go. now anyway. Mm. There's not much we can do when we stop. Yep. Or right, something to the good. left. A little spiky. A little spiky guy. Oh, I see. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Another anemone. <clears throat> Uh, is ship going at 0 0.2? Okay. Prime time for anemones. Yeah. They love it down mm -hmm. here. Welcome so to the anemone show. <laughs> Go ahead and zoom. We've migrated from Sponge City to anemone... Alley. Yeah. <laughs> Avenue. Avenue. Ooh. Mm. This one has Hello. very long tentacles. Long tentacles, yeah. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Uh, what a nightmare to a little lake shrimp. Kind of. Huh. Okay. So. I know you want to say relicanthid. <laughs> I, d I, I know, but <laughs> it's, it's so. Not, I don't know. It's not as dense. But it's so flowy. That's good there, things. Okay. Whole wide. Incredible. There's such an amazing diversity of anemones. There are some deep sea anemones with um, tentacles that are 10 feet long, mm, you know, super 3 meters long. long, that just are, are taking advantage of the fact that the water's moving all around them and combing that water for tasty bits. Mm hmm. Yeah, I don't know that. I don't know. Another fish. Mm -hmm. Tripod fish, maybe again. Yeah. Oh, and, and another one of those protoptilum sea pens. Yes. So these corals have a really <laughs> decent like temperature range. It seems like the sea well, pens. I was about to say, it doesn't really change in temperature, but like it can get to the lower Go ahead temperatures, and zoom. if that makes sense. Well, sorry, which ones are you talking about? The sea pens? The sea pens. 
Um, did that an enemy that we just saw, did it have Another. a second row of tentacles around the mouth? Did y'all think? Oh. Uh, yeah, like the shorter shorter ones, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, it about fish. Asking cause oh, yeah. Another one. I love the scaling nice. lasers because it tells me what creatures could fit in the palm of my hand. Yeah. 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 So small. All right, that's good, thanks. And then, uh, so interesting, yeah, waiting for food to tumble down the slope oh. towards. Well, slope right around the 20 meter mark. Yeah, we've <laughs> seen these ones on this dive so far. We've seen a bunch and they're all oriented in different directions. I don't know, you know, usually into the dominant current flow, but this one's going up slope. The other ones were away from the slope. Oh. Yeah. So they're hard. They're just having a good time. Just trying to, trying to have all the angles. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for letting me hang out with you. Watch. Back to Daniel. Yay, thanks, Bye, Megan. Megan. Bye, Megan. Another tripod fish, I think. Don't need to zoom. But it's yep. everywhere. Just noting. Mm -hmm. somewhat different um, geological features than we've been seeing, too. Um, everything is super sedimented. Mm -hmm. We also, we haven't really been Moved to very far. Oh, right. Yeah, well, um... <laughs> Another tripod fish. To the depth? Well, yeah, into, like, this area on a seamount, because we've been doing our shallow water dives have been, been on a little bump on top of the geodes. Mm -hmm. Right. Where, like, we're towards the, or we've been going like towards the top, so we haven't really been like towards the base. Right. Yeah, we had, I mean, we had a few, I think one other, one or two other dives that we did to s a similar depth, but we also haven't been on like a spine feature like this, so it'll be interesting when we get to top the top, if we make it to the top, <laughs> to see what that looks like. We will. Maybe we have some extra time in our budget to extend. We'll see how it works out. We've been extra fast on some of our past dives. Sure. Mm -hmm. Do you know, like, usually we don't dive for more than 24 hours. Do you know, like, wh like why? What's the limiting factor? Uh, I think we're just trying to, you know, complete all of our dives during certain weather windows. I, there's not a limitation there. We could stay down longer. Interesting. So I'm back, everyone. Uh, back on the SPL. This is Daniel, your SPL Welcome host. Back. Welcome. Welcome back. Thanks. So what have we s been seeing so far? I was gone for about an hour. A lot of tripod fish. A lot of anemones. We didn't move very far, but yeah. we didn't. were you there for the for the for the sea slug? Yes, I was. Okay. Well, that's. I feel like the last like big deal thing we did. Yeah. This oh, the, um, this rock looks kind of. Can we just look real quick at that surface? Urchin, but okay. it, it was light. Working. We saw a cool white and yellow urchin that we tried to collect. Oh yeah, didn't quite happen. That's okay. Yep. That's strange. Go Why ahead, are you in. so light? It's not sand. It almost looks like broken. Like that's the internal rock, which looks, you can see, so conglomerate. Yeah. It has all these little bits in it, really brecciated. And you can see the, the crust on the top, um, the black crust area. And then everything underneath is sort of, I think that's the broken internal structure, not yeah. something that's 
on okay. the outside. So it's weird. We haven't really seen that exposed like that. Some kind of a. We haven't seen anything broken and exposed and not covered in crust. Yeah, it looks like uh, uh, like they're all cemented by carbonate. Mm. So definitely could be broken pieces. Cool. Thanks for that zoom. Hopefully that'll make Adam happy. <laughs> See? And he'll probably feel better about not collecting a rock here then. <laughs> since that's not what he's going for to help age these seamounts. Looking for some of the original basalt for that. I'm happy. <laughs> oh, I was watching, yay. <laughs> Adam speaking from the great beyond. <laughs> Probably in the lounge. That fish. That fish is on a mission. So in our live streams, we have people that tune in from all around the world. And we have the United States representing with 81 people tuning in. And we also have people from other parts of the world, like Puerto Rico, the Philippines, United Kingdom, Sweden, Portugal, and shout out to St. Kitts and Nevis. I don't know, that's what I was asking. Japan, India, and France and Brazil. Small welcome aboard the exploration vessel Nautilus. Real quick, right there. Bridge now. Go ahead and zoom. Can we add another three zero meters to the two two five? Hmm. Guess yes. Is a cry? Yeah. I, oh, and it looks like there's like a chrysogorgid right next to it on the right. Oh. Um, yeah, I can't tell if that's. I don't see the like you know bottom crinoid feet, but they might be down under their potential crinoid and chrysogorgid. Teeny tiny. It's kind of. An interesting um, shape, Steve, if you're on. I don't know, maybe worth taking a look at that. I think we're okay there. So that was, I think, except for the, oh, another tripod fish, except for the almost collect from earlier, which might have been a coral, the first, like, soft coral that we've seen, or, um, yeah. Oh, what? my goodness. You wow. are what huge. Is this? That is a sea cucumber. That's a <laughs> that massive sea giant. cucumber. <laughs> oh, wow. my god! Let's collect it. No, just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> Um, that's like uh, half a meter long. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. It's okay. Wow. Wow, you can s see where it came from before. Uh, <laughs> looking at the previous uh, highlight, 
Oh yeah? Oh yeah, you can in the picture. Yeah, it's a little trail. You can see it's a little trail. It almost looks like it's left. There's rock underneath, so it's a really thin layer of sediment right here. You can see in the trail behind it that yeah. there's just a bunch of rock exposed. So it's, I guess, sucked up and tried to eat the thin, whatever's in the thin bit of sediment around it. Yeah. Can we maybe zoom a little closer on it? So what else can you tell us about this sea cucumber here? I can't tell you much about this particular one, but sea cucumbers are, like we mentioned before, echinoderm. So that's that umbrella group or phylum that includes urchins and includes sea stars uh, and also these, yeah, sea cucumbers. And they are feeding on whatever they can get from the detritus in the sand. So they ingest the sand and sort of take out the bits that they want and poop out the rest. And so that's why sometimes you'll see those fun sand coils behind them. And here you can see that this one's been, you can see the path that it's come. It's been sucking up all the sand behind it. A um, little bit of the nice. yeah. shelf in the 20 meter mark. That's good so there. Pretty. Yep. Coming up. Thank you. That was like a log. <laughs> <laughs> huge. <It's> huge. <laughs> That is quite a slope in Atalanta wow. Cam. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't seem, looking at it, like it's that steep. But it was nice to see one that was a different color other than yeah, purple. Yeah, it was really so big, dark, and it had those really long projections. So when we find creatures with um, spines like that, are those for defense or are they a different function? Hmm, um, that's very variable with different creatures. I don't think that those ones are for defense. I no. would imagine that they're more sensory. They're quite squishy. Mm -hmm. they're, they're soft, so they're not, um, not taking anybody out with those. <laughs> Bridge nav. Can we do another three zero meters at two two five? Gracias. It's really pretty outside right now. Oh like yeah. Looking towards the sun. Yeah. Nice. Just make sure you don't look directly at it. Yeah. <laughs> the waves are just calm enough. Yet down here, we s see no sunlight, given that we are about 3,000 meters below the ocean surface. Yep. And this is what we call the midnight zone, or the bathypelagic, I believe. And at this depth, between 1,000 and 4,000 meters, it's pitch dark. And this is where we find many deep sea creatures in this area. In fact, this is one of the first dives of this depth within this area of the Pacific Rim Islands Marine National Monument. And so we got some folks in the chat from Brooklyn in New York what? giving a shout out to Leva. Oh my gosh, hi, is it my family? Did they say anything? Uh, no, <laughs> not sure. No, but just, just shout out from Brooklyn? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> probably my family. Hi, family. <laughs> they say they're currently breathing smoke from Canadian wildfires. Oh no. Yeah, it's pretty Rough. bad on the East Coast. Yeah, these are the things you forget about when you're out here. You're I not experiencing know. those things back home. Mm -hmm. I know. I saw something online where people were saying that it's like on the on the scale it's like 150 is where it's like you shouldn't 
like you need to wear a mask mm. outside you shouldn't be outside and it's like getting there wow yeah it's kind of wild how many areas of the united states get impacted by wildfires even in you know if they're just just on the west coast or mm -hmm. in canada My sister a couple weeks ago, well, she's in Colorado, um, and she said like she couldn't go on hikes or anything because wow. it was it's too smoky. Wait. Yeah. What was up there, um, Hannaford? Sorry, you're not on you're the muted. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. I figured as much when we started moving constantly. That's, that's why I was saying like point two instead of three, just to try and limit it. But it's getting, it's not terrible, but I don't want it to get worse. Yeah, yeah, but it's still Actually, like. I think that's a rock. Sorry. Too much. Just kidding. No need to. Kidding. Yep. <laughs> Just a rock. Is it? Or actually, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> Go ahead and zoom. It's another one of those sea cucumbers, yeah. I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a Smaller. Different. Does it have the long yeah. spikes? Spikes, yeah. Oh, we got another one. Wow. Yeah, this one isn't quite in any of the guys either. Mm -mm. Um, there's similar things, but not. Nothing Do like you, it. Is there a possibility no. you might collect <laughs> no. it? No. Okay. <laughs> they're too, they're too Just squishy. Looking. That's not true. We, we have collected them, but that's usually a SERP thing. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. What happens when we bring them to the surface? Um, no, nothing. They look the same, except that sometimes they've gone through a hard time of it being slurped up. Um, Are we all good here? Yep. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Full wide. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just thinking about just existing just being a squishy animal, all of a sudden you just get slurped. <laughs> yeah, well they can, um, they can, they can become harder, yeah. So they can become smaller and firmer. And so sometimes you'll see this like fleshy organism and then when it comes up, it's, I mean, it's still fleshy, but it, it's a, kind of like a different texture. I wonder if that's what the, the ones that we were seeing were doing, but it looked like they were already kind of squished up, like the, the wide ones. Yeah, when they changed shape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they were just kind of like, going in on themselves but it's interesting how many different sea cucumbers we've seen you know like on previous dives we saw a bunch of those thick ones and now we're seeing I know very different ones here and there different why? sizes and, sh and shapes and colors why Ooh, what is that? And maybe our second coral looks bamboo-y. Go ahead and zoom. Ah. Very fascinating. First mm -hmm. of the dive. Wow. Yeah, I see the bands bamboo-y. I was going to say, there's also, it looks like there might be something below it, um, too. Would it be possible to do a very quick snip off the top? Oh, yeah. Without yep. too much trouble? All right. I don't so think we need to stop for that. Full wide. Oh, we're stopped anyway, aren't we? Uh, yeah, the ship has, like, yeah. two meters on the okay. move. Now, whether or not it's possible is interesting. <laughs> you would hope. Uh, 
Luby, what do we have in the front right now? Um, just a scoop, and then we have the uh, oh, C I pin. Can go in with the C. We just the have the scoop. C oh, because the plural ring's not in, or uh, sorry, the C slug or whatever. It's not in the. It's not in there, right? Because um, it went it up went the. Through the slope, so it's in okay. the slope door. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, we might, hold on, this is going to be tight. Atalanta's getting close to the hill there. Okay, if we can do it, that's great. If not, that's all right. We don't need to move back for it or anything. Just a snip off the top of 15 or so, I don't know, centimeters. 15, 20. So don't zoom, Amber, pull it back. Thank you. And let's look and still cam at this sampling. This much? Sorry, close close that please. Yeah. Uh yep, that looks good. Oh no. Oh. It's not in the cutter. Alright, hold on here. So close. One more shot at it. Yep. Great. Yay, Yay nice. Okay, that can go in the front. All right, I think we'll just move up the yep. slope a little bit first. Sure. These polyps are sup super, super big deeply. and fleshy. Yeah, and pink. Mm hmm Very pink. Usually, um, the bamboo corals we've been seeing, their their kind of branch stalk thing is kind of a whiter color, and their polyps are pink, but this is like fully pink. should clear out out of that <coughs> 20 meter mark hopefully yeah. yeah let's get out in front of you here yeah, oh, yeah. keep coming up Wow, it can barely fly and have the arm on it at the same time. Hmm. We've now gone about 370 meters. Great. Okay, maybe we'll try it here, Sarah. All right. All right, it's going in the omega in the box. Um, or is let's, that wrong? let's put it in in lambda in the box. Okay, All hold right. on here. Oh. Oh. Okay, box out. Box out. All right, that probably do.
close the box. Close the box. Awesome, thanks. You snip the top? <laughs> That's okay, yep. We got extra. Okay. And ship is still moving, right? Uh, no, we're stopped. Trying to correct this layback. Oh, right. Yeah. Sorry, so I keep forgetting about that. We're still swinging in here, but um, is, still quite far back. Are we noticing the swing? Hmm? Are we noticing it swinging in? It's yep, okay, it good. has been. It's right. It is, but it's not like super yeah, quick yeah. or anything. Yeah. It's, uh, since we stopped, it's probably swung on. Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. 30 meters? Yeah. It's got another. I think you can start going again. Okay. All right, so maybe no more than a few moves at a time. Seems so, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking like maybe two. That would be like 60 meters and then stop. Okay. What's this thing? Yeah, good eye. Zoom mm -hmm. in. Uh, sea cucumber? It's flying. Different. Oh, wait. Oh. It looks like Is it's rolling that around. Ooh. A Is mollusk? This, uh, nope. Other sea cucumber? Yes. Is it possible we might want to sample this guy? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I don't think we need to, no. Okay. What if you poke it? Wow. What is it? Just okay. observing for now. Oh, okay. Um, if we could, ooh, ooh, it's oh yeah, ooh. Head headless chicken monster maybe. A different color. Um. So that's. I mean. Sea piggy. Maybe an elk pitted. Yeah, that's the group for the sea pigs. Yep. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Um, yeah, I think it's, wow, Elazipodia. look at those. Some kind of Elazipodia. Not headless chicken monster. Yes. Not, but sea piggy. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> wow. Look at that swimming. It's so fun to watch that. I love it. <laughs> These are my favorite. Well. So that what we're seeing inside, is that its intestines or its stomach? Yes, it's its internal organs. So like that yellow stuff? Yeah, that's all the sand. Yep, mm. that's the sediment it's eating and digesting. Um, and everything else is kind of just, yeah, it's like internal organs. Mm -hmm. Makes me glad that we're not transparent. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, wow. Look at its mouth. So does this have a brain, or is it just uh, a different collection of cells? No, just uh, just collections of cells, of yep. uh, nerve cells. Interesting. Yeah. I like its little horns. Yeah, I know that. Those are kind of interesting. They're really cool. The, the, like two little spines that's yeah that's their it's tentacles but they're like kind of they look like they're polypy like almost even though they're not they're tentacles but yep um so yeah um sea cucumbers have stomachs we're mainly looking at like you know where the so it, the 
sediment goes through its um, the ring canal into the stump through the esophagus into the stomach and then through its intestine and out through its um, cloaca and anus. Hmm. So it does have a front and an end. Yes, it's it, not, does. Mm -hmm. it does. It's not just one entry point. Nope. Ins and outs. Oh, this one's so cool. Look at its like rolls. Oh my gosh. It's doing the butterfly stroke. <gasps> Look at those rolls. I could sit here all day and watch this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so graceful. So neat. So these have bilateral symmetry, like you were mentioning. There's a like there's a front and a back, and there's kind of like a head side and a butt side, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is, is different. Although it's related to sea stars, the sea stars they have um, radial symmetry, so kind of around a central axis. Um, but even even in their larval phase, their larvae larvae in in uh, sea stars have a do ha also sort of have a, a posterior and anterior and um, a front and a back. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, that is such a pretty color too. It's so rare to see like red tones, I feel. I feel like we see quite a few red tones in the or, in the deep sea now. I mean, but for it's, yeah. like these particular ones, it's like pretty. the whole mm -hmm. body to be like a, a shade of orangey mm -hmm. red. Okay. We good? Bye, friend. Thank you for the Thanks dance. Thanks for putting on oh, a show. So pretty. That was neat. <clears throat> you can kind of see it's, uh, it's, yeah, rear end towards the end there. Somebody described it as a deep sea lava lamp. Yeah, right. Oh, the yeah. colors are kind of yeah. like that. I wonder if it was like sprinting away from us. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <coughs> It was um, on the sediment until we disturbed it, but they're fine. So here's an interesting question from the chat. Mm -hmm. If a creature doesn't have a brain, can you call what they do instinct? Hmm. Well, some things have, you know, like a nervous system. But what, how would you def a define like instinct? A nervous system, yeah, right. It depends on how you define instinct. Yeah. So as um, deep ocean biologists yourself, how would you describe instincts? Yeah, I mean, they definitely have their behaviors that are innate to the organism. Um, so I guess in, in that way, it is an instinct. You know, it know, there are certain stimuli that it can perceive and that it responds to, and the way it responds to those stimuli is, is I suppose, an instinct. But um, it's not the decision-making and processing of those stimuli is a lot more rudimentary than in organisms that have brains mm -hmm. or you know is not present at all the decision making yeah. there because like you can i mean i guess you could define an instinct as like literally any gene being like interacted with and like that giving a response or something if that makes sense but yeah, a lot of these organisms have nervous systems. Well, uh, well, many of them also don't, you know. Yeah. Depending on what you're talking about, like a sponge does not have that yes. at all. Um, 
you know, um, jellies, you know, not really. Kind of as you get higher up, the, the, they start to be more. Yep. Ganglia is what you call concentrations of nerves in, a, in an area of an organism. Start to be more organisms with ganglia. Um, yeah, just kind of like stepwise increase in different uh, phylum of what you might be able to refer to as a nervous system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I guess maybe the way this person was thinking is, let's say you go to a doctor and they have that little hammer and they hit on your knee to see if your knee mm -hmm. moves. That sends stimuli to your knee, which sends an electrical current up your nervous system to your brain, which says, hey, kick. And then that goes back down to your leg. I guess another way of asking about instincts is how does... Another sea pig. How does that relate to like communication between cells? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, some have very simple just like um, pumps within their cells that will will pump different ions across, you know, cell mm -hmm. membranes or, or wall, um, you know, barriers in their cells. Yeah, passive. Then, then have them elicit different responses. Um, but not everything is like, yeah, uh, an electrical current through a, a complex nervous system. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for example, like, well, not at this depth, but at shallower depths where there is light, there are simple organisms that are able to respond to, like, hey, there's light over there. I either move towards it or away from it. That's called phototaxis. Um, yeah, here, responding to different stimuli, maybe, like, shifts in, in current. What's that right there? Um, yeah. Where? This right there? Is that what you're looking at? Pink? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> is it a rock? Is it a bone? <laughs> <laughs> rock. Yeah, it's a rock. It looks flat on top. Yeah. Big flat. Yeah, you can see it in Atalanta. It's just a big flat rock. Okay, so we just finished two ship moves. Um, Atalanta's about... 47 meters Yeah, you can do more than two. Like, just just keep doing them until the layback is too far. Like, we can go at least okay. twice that. Can we look here? Sorry, there's something on that rock. Yes, I don't see anything. Um, Trust you. Yeah. Right there? Oh yeah, right, yeah. I see it this time. <laughs> Go ahead and zoom. A baby? Bamboo? Yeah, maybe small. Yeah, it looks like I see a, like there and there and there, maybe a couple. But I also yeah. am like, am I making that up? <laughs> well, it looks very similar to it what we collected. It does look bamboo It's very small. All right. That's good, thanks. Okay, full wide. Oh, there's, um, and now it's out of the frame. Never mind. There was something sticking up, but, um, and it looked like it kind of was spongy, but it's gone. The difficult thing about seeing things in still cam is that when they're really, like, thin and translucent, it's almost impossible to mm -hmm. point them out.
Daniel, anything, anything fun, any jokes, any qu questions? So, somebody earlier sent in a, a really funny joke that I'm trying to find if I can pull it up. But in the meantime, I'll ask a question for you. So, what do we do with the samples that we collect? Yeah, that's well, a great question. Yeah, you um, they, those go to various places. Uh, the biology, we all of it we process to some extent on board. Um, the biology, we mostly are just preserving um, to be sent to the MCZ, that's the Museum of Comparative Zoology, which is our repository, uh, the repository we use, that's at Harvard in Massachusetts. And um, from there, uh, scientists interested in the samples we collect can request access to those samples and be able to, and can study them further. So most of what we're doing on the ship is just deciding uh, how best to preserve it and taking, you know, because of the way it gets shipped and 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 processed, taking often, uh, like, a, say it's a coral, taking a sub-snip that we know always stays in 95% ethanol. And so that, for genetic uh, investigations, will be preserved always in that type of ethanol. Um, and then a larger sample that's for now in 95% ethanol, but might end up ultimately in 70% or uh, something like that. And and um, then the rocks, those are currently getting cut open on board um, so that there can be sort of like a preliminary description made of the type of rock and a decision made about um, where the rock will go. At least some portion of it, or sometimes the whole thing, goes to the Marine Geological Sample Laboratory uh, at the University of Rhode Island, which is where we send our rock samples, which again can be requested out by geologists from there. Um, and then on this cruise, we also have uh, Adam Sewell, who is doing, whose lab is doing some work uh, on the rock samples of interest. Um, and so he, he's taking some to his lab uh, and then the folks at Impossible Sensing, who have the laser dive botter, um, taking sub -sub some subsamples of a few rocks as well um, to be able to run tests. So those are kind of like the ground truth samples for what they measured in situ in on a dive um, with the laser dive bot. Um, yeah, so that's where our, where our samples are going. We have a couple other little things, um, some scientists ashore that are participating that had more particular sample requests that were um, trying to accommodate. And then, so that's some of the push cores you see, um, and also the eDNA samples. So that's the water samples we're collecting, trying in high density areas, trying to see if we can non-invasively, so without actually collecting any physical biological samples, um, analyze the, the water to see uh, what genetic material has has broken off of um, the coral or sponges in, in the region. And, and if we can, through genetic sequencing of the water and what's in it, tell who's living there. So those filtered water samples are getting sent to uh, Northwest Fisheries Science Center. I guess it's another tripod fish, but... So there's another pretty uh, uh, important question that's also related to what we were talking about wet lab. Do the samples ever smell while we bring them up? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, it's an acorn worm. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, really? yeah, cool. Oh, nice. Go ahead and zoom. A few smelly ones. The bone we collected with Osidax worms yesterday didn't smell awesome. <laughs> no. That's cool. Okay, so, yeah, and I was actually looking for an ID for this one, but, oh gosh, I'm going to break Yoda this. Yoda Purpurata. Yeah, they <laughs> named it after Yoda. That's so, so funny. Oh, I love How, it. Oh, is it because, like, the, like, I won't, yes, I won't the little the ears. ears look at them. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the head of it that looks is like so Yoda. <laughs> but, yeah, this is an acorn worm. Hmm. They, um... They filter, they, so they eat the sediment and then they filter it out. 
and then they poop it back out, and that's all they do. Um, but yeah, this is something that we've seen before. I don't know if we've seen it with its like quote unquote ears out, but um, same thing as what we've seen, just di uh, deeper, deeper depths. Um, and by the looks of, oh no, it is found at these depths. Okay. So similar strategy there to the sea cucumber. Yes. And you'll see. Yeah, put another one in at least. Yeah. A lot of different organisms in the deep sea using similar strategies to one another um, that are best suited to being down here. So, mm -hmm. you know, everything's kind of living off of whatever minimal, okay quality marine <laughs> snow is drifting down from above. And so one strategy is, well, like, okay, a bunch of it lands on the bottom. What can I sift through and save some of we'll go full myself. wide, I'll try and get you a better still cam before we go. Oh, sure. thanks. Thanks. And then the other strategy is, okay, some of it's floating floating by me. What can I what can I trap as it floats past? And that's what uh, corals are doing and anemones and the crinoids that climb up on top of corals and uh, resingent sea stars that lift their arms up. They're all doing that, just trying to catch what's what's passing by. Nice. All right. Let me just do no. one more, but I think nice. we got some good That's shots. Cool. One thing's actually pretty big. It's huge, yeah. Wow. How yeah, big right, like just the head oh, is like 10 centimeters. <laughs> wow. And then the whole thing, I don't know, half meter or something. Hard to see where the animal ends okay. and the poop trail begins. Yeah, right. that's what I was thinking. Perfect, thanks. Yep. But yeah, these are, um, so these, Wait, let me just make sure I get my facts straight. But I'm pretty sure these are not annelids, actually. These are hemichordates. But let me just make sure, though. They don't look like segmented worms to me. Yeah. So worms um, worms aren't all one phylum. There are many different phylums. Um, and you can oftentimes, even they're even more complicated than that. But um, yeah, these are hemichordates which um, yeah is primarily like acorn worms um, uh, what are some other hemichordates yeah there's thing? also you know there's ribbon worms and flat mm -hmm. worms and yeah the segmented worms and annelids yes lots of groups of worms yep but that big um, like that big pointy part of it that we like that kind of looks like the head um, is actually the like the proboscis I think. Uh, let me just check. But they're really cool. They're really unique. The segmented worms are like earthworms, right? Uh, like that is a type, yeah, of segmented mm -hmm. worm, but. Um, ones that we're seeing down here too are segmented worms yep like um Ooh. you know like the polychaetes that we've been seeing oh <gasps> really oh my oh gosh wow. oh big huge six arms <laughs> whoa huh. interesting it has six arms your sea yeah. star sea yep. star <coughs> go ahead and zoom Okay, first sea star of the dive. Yeah. Yeah. So what causes sea wow. stars to have more than, say, five arms? Um, generally, uh, evolution. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> there, that there's like any specific one thing you can point to. It's just a different different adaptation. Some of them have way more than that. They're, you know, crown of thorns sea stars that you might have heard of as big problems on reefs. They have many, many arms. We also see a lot down here, like the solasterids, uh, sun stars that have, yeah, it can be like, I don't know, Ooh, more than right. 10 arms. Get out of there. Full wide, please. Were those those Go catch up. giant sea stars you were talking about during reefs? Which ones? What, with the ones with the multiple arms. Uh, on reefs? Yeah. The crown of thorns? Uh-huh. Yeah, they're very, they're they're pretty big. Um, they're And they're coralivorous. I don't know, they can be like 20 centimeters across or something. It's pretty big. Looks like a hat. 
And it looks like there's something growing on the rock behind it. I don't really know what. Could be a tunicate or a sponge. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Some stuff protruding from the sediment as well. It's funny when we say, like, that could be a tunicate or a sponge, because <laughs> a tunicate is just about the most almost sophisticated and close to a Us. human type of invertebrate as you could get. And uh, and a sponge is the most rudimentary that you could have. Haul up a little yeah. quicker there, sir. Okay. Somehow they can look quite similar sometimes. Speeding up. And that sea star mm -hmm. was moving. It's two feet were out and about. As for an ID for this, I don't know. Don't. I'm not sure. I'm just going to put possible Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Six arm Patrick. Yeah. Do be sure to note the C star there so that they can um, that they see it. Oh, yeah, you took a note yeah, earlier. Yeah, okay, great. Um, you can do another one. Yep. I love watching sea stars move up close. I know. Because the two feet, it looks like there's a tiny army of little Such people that yeah. are like <laughs> carrying this big <laughs> thing. And when you look from on top, you just see the big thing floating. But uh, from the side, you see the tiny army marching. I need to see these sea stars' feet because I did not know they had feet. Look, here you I was going to say, you can see so it on my screen feet. right now. So that's what they, oh, a crinoid, stocked <gasps> crinoid. Ooh, those are some thin arms, I feel. Go ahead and zoom. Okay. With a another crinoid on it? Layers of crinoids. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. This one almost makes it look like there is a decent current. It looks like it's wiggling. Yeah, it's a lot. like wiggling. Is That's there a way that we measure current down here? That's good there. Thank you. Yeah. We're good. So, oh, yeah, we don't have anything currently on the ROV that's measuring current, so we kind of just get like a little feel for it. And also, we are about at our shift change, so if we stop talking, that's why. So your next SBO host will be Katie, and she'll be coming up shortly. But in the meantime, if you all have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the chat, and we'll be here to answer them for you. So there's a question for you, Sarah, if you're still uh -huh. on. So what determines the primary coloring of the fauna at this depth? With no light, uh, we might not think that it would be some sort of camouflage. A lot of these seem to be more purple. Sorry, you said the, the primary coloring of what? Of uh, the fauna, like animals. Oh, okay, so yeah. So um, basically at this, after you get to a certain point in the water column. I don't remember the exact numbers. Um, you don't really, so red light and, um, oh gosh. Is red light long? Yeah, short? red light's long. Okay, long. So like shorter wavelengths um, penetrate more deeply. So when an organism is like- The band C H2O is starting to creep up again. 
I'll just be quick with this. So if basically like red things are basically invisible, um, even though there's no light, it's super difficult to see them. Um, but otherwise, I don't really know. It can usually be like what they eat, whatever. Yeah. It's just the coral, yeah. Nope. So, one last question that I'll answer here, and uh -huh. I'll turn it over to Katie. How do crinoids compare to corals? So, crinoids are a type of, I believe what it's called, kinoderm, which is related to starfish, sea cucumbers, sea, sea urchins, yes. etc. And corals are completely different in their own phylum. They are nadarians, so they're more closely related to, say, jellyfish or siphonophores. Mm -hmm. And sea anemones. Mm -hmm. And hydrozoans, yes. They have, so a lot of things in the ocean have similar like body plans, like similar layouts. So like crinoids and coral polyps both have like, you know, uh, appendages that are like reaching out, but crinoids have arms that are reaching out while cor corals have tentacles um, in their polyps that reach out. And, but they both use those for uh, nutrient capture, food. Um, corals can actually move those polyps like back to their mouth to feed. I don't think crinoids do that. I, I can't quite remember the way they do it, but yeah. Um, convergent evolution. Video watch change.
afternoon, everybody. This is the four to eight watch coming in. So a huge thank you to the other previous two watches who did the blue water. So now we get to actually start hopefully seeing some things in this unique, deep geological feature. So same thing that we do every night. I'm gonna ask if y'all guys will say your name, what you're doing on board, and the question for the night. They're getting there, thank you. Uh, and the question for the night actually came from the amazing biologist or amazing geologist on shift tonight. I know. Um, <laughs> the geologist on shift, who is amazing, who is super stoked right now. Uh, the question is, where do you want to travel to next? So, or where are you traveling to next? I'll take either option. So for me, I'm Katie Doyle, I'm Lead Science Communication Fellow, and I will be heading to upstate New York at the beginning of July, and I'm going on an overnight kayaking trip down the Colorado River uh, at the end of this month. Uh, hello, my name is Corley Rodriguez. I'm a graduate student at the University of Rhode Island's Graduate School of Oceanography. Uh, the next place I'm going to is, I'm going to a conference in France. I'm going to Goldschmidt 2023. So if anyone is going there, please come to my poster session. <laughs> it is titled, uh, let me look at the title. <laughs> it's titled, Rare Earth Element Enrichment as a Function of Water Depth and Recent Growth of Pacific Ferromanganese Crust. I'll be presenting on samples from two Nautilus cruises in this area. Um, but, or sorry, three Nautilus cruises in this area, but from 2022 and 2019. Um, so come say hi. Good evening, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brian Kennedy, I'm a deep sea benthic um, ecologist uh, with Boston University and the Ocean Discovery League. Um, and where am I going next? I, my next I'm going on a little hiking trip in Western North Carolina a uh, week after we get back. And then um, in July, I'm heading to the Channel Islands for a week of kelp diving. Ooh, sounds amazing. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, good evening, everybody. I am Chris, I'm the data logger here on the Nautilus. And after this, I'm heading back home to Seattle for a couple months. It's been a long time, so I'm looking forward to working on my boat and enjoying the summer in the Northwest. And if I could toss that down to Daryl. Yep, what's the question? Uh, who are you? What are you doing here? And where are you going to travel to next? I'm Daryl Tillock. I'm the video engineer intern. Um, I'm planning on going to, to back to Tennessee and hopefully working in the stadium uh, at the uh, I'm trying to remember the Sound Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee. If you guys are out there, uh, it'd be fun. Love it. Thank you, Daryl. So right now our ROV pilots are, and our navigator are currently doing a ship move, so we're not going to be hearing from them. So I want to throw our first question of the night out to Coralie, mainly just because we talked about this right before we came up here. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you that one. Uh, Coralie, what are the geologic objectives for this deep dive? Yeah, so essentially uh, we're trying to better characterize the area, the volcanism. We're diving on ancient volcanoes right now, uh, but the volcanism is pretty enigmatic. So we're hoping to collect samples of fresh basalt to date these volcanoes in the region. Uh, we also hope to take sa uh, sediment cores. Uh, there's some scientists ashore that are looking at the macrofaunal and I think otolith sam something in these. Um, and then uh, just getting more ferromanganese crust as well. 
to better characterize the United States exclusive economic zone, which is uh, where we're diving right now. Awesome, thank you so much. So we're down deep today. Um, we're 20, just shy of 2,900 meters. We started up around 3,100. This is the deepest dive um, we've done this expedition. It's only the third dive in the entire EZ around Kingman and Palmyra um, below 2,500. And I, let me double check myself, but I actually think this is the deepest dive ever um, here. But give me half a second to pull up my notes. Uh, it's tied. And Hercules Dive 1913 started at 2128. So we don't go up. Nope. There, so we're the third deepest dive. And there was one that got down to 3,400 meters. Um, but still, most everything we see down here is probably going to be um, um, pretty new. Uh, it certainly, it may, not, it may not be a new species to science, but it is likely a new species record for this region. Um, is there any particular organism that you are expecting to see, or any new particular species that you're like, ah, I think this might be down here? No, not specifically. Um, generally, coral life falls off uh, real quick once you get below, deeper than about 2,600 meters or so. We just see a lot fewer. Yes, please. And we see, start seeing some different ones. So I don't have a specific one in mind, but I don't expect to see, um, and we'll see some of the same families, but a lot of the, the genera um, and uh, definitely the individual species start shifting um, at this depth. And then we'll be transiting. We're going to, this is a long dive, and we'll get all the way up into like 1,900 meters, I believe. Um, and so then we'll get right back into the zone of the normal corals we've been seeing all of this expedition, which will be a cool kind of thing to see that transition all the way up. So why was this particular sea mound chosen for this very deep dive, the most likely deepest that we will be diving for this expedition? Uh, primarily weather, in some ways. Um, this feature is a deeper top, so it tops out about, and we're going to try and get the actual summit. Um, duster, me, duster, duster. Let me double check, let me just pull up the other and get the actual depth. Um, Yeah, so maximum depth is right at 1,900 um, for the summit. And so that's the highest, the shallowest point on this feature. Um, and so most of the features we have dove on so far have been taller. Um, this also stands in contrast, which it is a, 
more of a ridge feature, and so everything we've been diving on previously has more, pretty much been a geo or a flat top table mount. Um, this is an elongated ridge structure um, that likely never broke the surface uh, and was never ex exposed to surface erosion. So, and I believe this will probably be a Coralie question. Uh, is it possible that this is, or do we believe that this is from the same? Put up the uh, sled there. Volcanic activity that created, or a possible leaky fault that created the other seamounts and guillotes in this area? Um. And I know it's hard just looking at one little picture and trying How to. How are the gauges? Term is fine. Like, n similar in that, like, Kauai and, you know. Gauges are all good. Big Island are similar, you know. Uh -huh. Somewhere in that sense, like. Sealed itself up. Although we don't technically know if there is different hot spots feeding these. I the thing is that we just don't know. It's hard to tell without good samples. So that's what we're Can hoping you make to a get. couple notes on a on a separate page list while I'm thinking about it? To do um, change the I'm waiting. <laughs> uh, so I know you've talked about this several times, Corley, but what are some of the possible thought processes on how this enigmatic area was created. I know one of them you said was a volcanic hotspot, one was a leaky transform, and then I can't remember the third. Yeah, let me. <laughs> no, 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 but will you, uh, will you talk a little bit about uh, the first two? Oh, okay, so a hotspot is essentially defined as a deep mantle plume, so uh, whereas a mid-ocean ridge is kind of higher up in the mantle, that's where you're getting your lava, and that's the mantle that you're tapping into. Uh, a hot spot, you'll get it from deeper in the mantle. Mm -hmm. And um, essentially, as it's, we think of it as stationary, um, and as the plate moves over, uh, as plate te tectonics ha happen, it moves over this hot spot, and you'll get these little seamounts. So that's the hot spot uh, idea, a leaky transform fault. So you can think of a transform fault like San Andreas, for example, is the one that I'm more familiar with. And um, and uh, essentially transform fault is one where two pl plates slide past each other. Uh, but you can, since there's that fracture in the rock, you can get some magma uh, released through that fracture. So that's essentially what it is. Ooh, sea cucumber. So like our dive yesterday, we've been seeing a fair number of sea cucumbers, one ac only one acorn worm this time, instead of the whole forest of them. We saw a herd or whatever we're gonna call a group of acorn worms um, the other day, but we've seen a lot, a fair amount of diversity, uh, even if fairly low abundance here, uh, of holothurians on this dive so far. Really, when you get into the deep, um, Deep, deep, deep. I mean, I, I have a very jaded sense of what deep is. When I go to a conference and talk to shallow water people, we have trouble talking about deep and shallow because I consider 200 meters shallow, and shallow water core people think 200 meters is the like the abyss. Here be dragons uh, <laughs> in terms of depth. Um, so I have to be careful on using the relative terms of deeper and shallower. But once we get below 3,000 meters, um, it really becomes the realm of the echinoderms. Um, they become uh, really the dominant macrofauna down here. Um, you'll find corals, you'll find sponges, you'll find fish, don't be wrong, they're, they're all still here. Um, but the echinoderms really seem to excel at